What's up, everyone? This is Mojtaba from the All Things XR podcast. My guest today is Dennis Crowley, founder of Foursquare, one of the most famous and popular location-based applications. We talked about the metaverse and what Dennis, one of the most famous Web2 entrepreneurs, thinks about Web3. Enjoy. Hi, Dennis. Welcome to the All Things XR podcast. It's an honor to have you on the show. Uh, thanks for having me. I'm excited to be here and, and, uh, and chat. Thanks very much. So, Dennis, um, one of the hottest topics in the tech world right now is the metaverse. Uh, what is your definition of the metaverse? Um, I think the metaverse is uh, like anywhere that anywhere in the digital world that you dip into to escape the real world. And so it doesn't have to be Oculus. Like it can be Twitter. It can be Instagram. It could be World of Warcraft from 15 years ago. Um, you know, I think it does have to have, you know, other people that you can interact with there. I think that's part of it. It can't just be like a, a one player game that you disappear into. But, you know, by definition, it, it's social. It's a way to escape the real world. And it's, um, uh, you know, using some kind of digital tools. Mm hmm. Great, great. So, um, Dennis, can you also uh, call Forest Square a metaverse because it mirrored the world and was kind of a digital twin of the physical world, and it also uh, bonded to the real world in some ways. Um, do you see Forest Square as a metaverse? Uh, I don't think so. I always thought Forest Square was a a game that was built on top of the real world. So I, I think that's you know you're we're kind of flirting with the definitions of like you know, augmented and, and virtual, right? Not, not mm -hmm. augmented reality and virtual reality, but like a augmented experience versus mm -hmm. a, a you know, virtual experience. Mm -hmm. And, you know, video games in the lot are like a virtual experience. Like you're playing the role of a character in a make-believe world. And, you know, um, obviously augmented reality is, you know, graphics and things on top of the real world. And I think Foursquare was kind of like poor man's augmented reality, right? It's a game that's built on top of the real world, but it doesn't doesn't replace it. Just kind of, you know, existing on top of it. Uh huh. So um, you're saying that if, for it to be a metaverse, it has to um, actually replace the real world. Well, I think it's like an escape, right? Uh huh. You know, like Twitter, people will stand in. Well, st you know, you're standing in line to get into a, a store, a movie, or buy something, and you you don't want to stand in line, so you you dip into Twitter or Instagram, and it just kind of takes your attention off of the real world. I mean, that's the thing that social media gets knocked for, but you know, oh, it's pulling people out of the real. You know, like imagine like you're at a, a family dinner and everyone's on their phone, right? That's like it's not the metaverse per se, but like that that's kind of a, a teaser for what what will come. In, in lots of ways. Mm -hmm. Great. So, uh, Dennis, can we um, also get to know a bit about uh, the idea behind uh, Forest Cure? What was the vision back in the day? Yeah, I mean, the original vision was, um, you know, we had this idea of building software that would make cities easier to use. You know, building mm -hmm. software that um, could could manufacture, create serendipity, right? Create these serendipitous meetups. And, um, you know, I think from that emerged this idea of building, uh, building a game on top of the real world, like turning, turning life into a game, we, we used to say. And I think that's where the early gamification stuff came from. You know, of course, now Foursquare is, gosh, like, I don't know, 13, 14 years old. And, you know, it's a, you know, we're a $150 million business that is mostly around, um, you know, location technology and enterprise tools and data analytics and geospatial analytics. Like it's, it's grown in, into this entirely different thing, but initially it was really like, okay, software that can help you experience the real world in a different way. Uh-huh. Great. So Dennis, if you founded uh, Forest Girl in 2022, what would it look like? Uh, it probably look, look a lot the same, you know, people ask me this all the time, like, would the badges be NFTs, you know, would it, would all the check-ins be on the blockchain? And it's like, I mean, they could, but they don't have to be. Um, and more importantly, I, I don't think the fundamental experience would be that different if the badges were NFTs or if every check-in was, was on, on chain. Um, 
you know, like one of the one of the things that we really wanted to do with Foursquare that we never really got to was this idea of, you know, if you get this one particular badge, it will unlock something for you in, in the real world. Like we kind of flirted with that, but we didn't really execute it at, at scale. You know, even even Swarm, the, the check-in app where you, where you earn coins, right? The coins aren't really part of a economy. You know, they're kind of just like, it's like a made up economy. Like there's old, you know, there's, um unlimited inflation in that in that con in that economy you know is is there a version of that where you know it is more tokenized yeah probably right would, mm -hmm. would it change the experience for users not unless the coins could be used for something else like you could tr like trade them for ethereum or, or trade them for you know governance access or, or access to, to something but like i mean i'm not even seeing a lot of people doing that now with with like the Foursquare clones that are being built on top of Web three, yeah. I think that's where it will go. Um, but yeah, I don't I don't think you've really seen a lot of that yet. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Great. Um, so Dennis, there was a tweet recently saying that an NFT is like being the Foursquare mayor of a JPEG, and I found it a really interesting point of view. Now, why, what are your thoughts on NFTs? Do you see them as really valuable assets, or it's just hype? I think it. I think it depends. I mean, there's there's a couple different types of NFTs, of course, right? There's like, you know, there there's artwork. Or like, hey, I'm a I'm an artist and I made something amazing, mm -hmm. and I will sell you a digital copy of it. And I, you know, I think that stuff is. I think that's great. You know, you get into things like the apes and the punks, which are you know they're kind of like trinkets or or garbage pail kids. Maybe, I guess that maybe they they count as art. You know, I, I like what the the. Um, the apes are doing with like, mm -hmm. you know, some of them, you actually own the copyright and you can, you can build your own little universe uh, around that. You know, I have one of the crypto punks and, and, and I have one as like a, um, you know, I, I feel like it's an important part of internet history uh -huh. and, and, you know, that, that's, that's kind of the, the, one of the underlying themes of the, of web three is that, uh, Hey, you can own a piece of the internet. Like, yeah, I, I own this punk. That's part of, <laughs> part of this stuff right now. Right. Um, I think there's, you know, I, I think the um, like NFTs as like DAO governance tokens are re are really interesting. Like there's a bunch of DAOs that I sit in on and I'm not super active in terms of decision making, but it's kind of fun to see how the sausage is made in terms of what are people voting on? What do people care about? What are the economics here? Who, who's trying to acquire, uh, you know, voting interest? I think, I think that stuff's interesting. I think there's a lot of really cool stuff that will happen with DAOs in the future. Um, so yeah, I'm like, I'm a big believer in the this idea that like NFTs are a, you know, the, the like a new primitive on the internet, right? You can finally own something on the internet and transfer it to someone else. Like I, I, I believe in that and I believe that will unlock pretty interesting stuff uh, in the near future. Yeah, yeah. Um, so um, actually, if we want to um, make them more valuable and um, make them um, something that owners really get value off of, um, what do you think that um, the potential of NFTs are? Um, like, how do you how do you make them valuable? Or what do you mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually get them valuable in uh, a virtual or um, um, in the real world. Oh yeah, I'm, I I mean I feel like a lot of these like NFT projects or the PFP projects, it's kind of li lightning in a bottle, right? Mm -hmm. Like, what is the thing that really made this thing take off? Right? I think you can. Yeah. When you look at you look at the punks, for example, and and those like I'm fond of those just because of like you know internet history have been around for a while. They were kind of made as just an experiment. Like I, I love I love that. Like everything in that speaks to me. <laughs> you know, like I, I when I look at the the board ape stuff and the community that pops up around it, like the access to parties that people yeah. were getting from NFT week, the, um, you know, the, Hey, I'm going to make a comic book with my, with my character, or I'm going to, you know, launch a, a consumer brand for something with, with the ape being the character like that. That's, that's interesting. You know, I, I you know, I, I also look at like the the 1,000 other PFP projects that come up every day, and, and I just stay away from that space a lot of it because it's just it's just speculation, yeah, um, in a lot of ways. So I, I think it's interesting. I can appreciate what people are doing, but you know, 
I, the things that I gravitate to pers personally are, you know, digital artists that are that are sharing their art online as in a digital format. And that took me a long, that took me a while to wrap my head around. Like, wait, wait, it's a digital piece of art that I never actually own the thing for it. I just own the NFT. Like that, that took me a while to to get. Mm -hmm. And you know, just like a, 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 an NFT or a token here and there, just to kind of see what's interesting. But I'm not a major, I'm not a big player in that space. And I'm uh -huh. not one of the NFT whales. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so that is, um, uh, Foursquare was an interesting Web2 application. Recently, we hear lots of comparisons between Web2 and Web3, and there are different groups and opinions about Web3. Um, how do you define uh, Web3, and in what ways um, it can be better and um, actually augment Web2? Yeah, I mean, there's, um, there's a bunch of ways to describe it. Like, I think the... Mm -hmm. I've listened to a lot of Chris Dixon's yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, podcast and, and, and a big fan of a lot of stuff that he writes about. And you know, generally it's like, you know, web one is open and web two is closed and web three is going back to open. And, and the, the superpower you get in web three is, is ownership. Um, and, you know, like when you asked me about Foursquare, like what would, what would be different with Foursquare? Like, yeah, maybe, maybe you would own all of your check-ins, right? Uh, maybe it's your call to monetize them or not to, you know, for us to be able to run advertising. So maybe you take that check-in profile and you go, you, you go on to a different service and you decide how much you want that service to, to know about. Exactly. Like maybe, maybe, maybe that's, that's what it looks like. This, this ownership of, of the data and the ability to monetize the data for your own personal gain, not, not for, for Foursquare's gain, like I think that's kind of where it's going. I, I haven't seen. Like, I I love the romantic idea of that. I haven't seen a lot of that exactly. yet. Like I've seen the projects where people are trying to reproduce Instagram, but but on chain, and and reproduce Twitter, but do it on chain. And it's like, okay, I, I get it. I see what you're doing here. And wh where's the part where I get a check for you know thousand dollars a month for all my tweets? Like I, we're, yeah. we're, not, we're not there yet. You know, if someone solves that, then it's like okay, that's that's really interesting, right? Because you know, then you kind of come back to the fundamental thing of Web three, where it's like, hey, I, I'm I'm doing the work, I'm creating the content. Like, why is Twitter getting paid? Why aren't I getting paid? Mm -hmm. You know, and I think that's mm -hmm. what Web three is supposed to solve. I'm very interested in to see how. How, and, and I think it probably will dance around solving that, you know, maybe get to solving it sooner than later. I'm interested to see how that how that manifests itself. Yeah, exactly. One of the um, things I think that would be cool is that I could uh, somehow transfer my uh, uh, Forest Square uh, check-ins and coins to, for example, um, Niantic uh, location-based apps, for example. Yeah. If I could transfer that to Pokemon Go, that would be awesome, I think. But uh, yeah. as you said, um, there aren't many cross-platform, um, uh, many cross-platform games or projects in the NFT and um, crypto world, and I think the real potential is there actually to have the, to have it uh, cross domain. Yeah, I think like philosophically, right? Like it's a good, it's it's like that's what people want, right? Mm -hmm. Even what you're talking about. Like, your swarm coins can be Niantic coins. Exactly. Your sword and your your gun in Fortnite can be used in Star Wars Battlefront. But you know there was a there was a, a thread going around on Twitter like a couple of weeks ago, I think, and it you know it was like forty tweets of like let me let me tell you why it's hard to take a gun out of Fortnite and bring that gun into Star Wars Battlefront. Um, and you know there's a there's a lot of good technical points from the lens of a of a game designer. It's like it it doesn't. Like it, you just can't do cross inventory in games. That's like a magic wand type of thing. Like there's 50 things that have to happen. And, and you know, th that's, that doesn't get solved like this year. But if, if the North Star for the next generation of game designers is like, yeah, let's build a world in which you can do that. You know, mm -hmm. this is kind of like the Ready Player One universe. Like exactly. you could be Chewbacca there or you can be you know, Fred Flintstone, or you can be Snoopy. It doesn't really matter, right? All these things play nice together. Um, you know, that, that is probably a good North Star for developers to rally around, but sometimes it takes a long time to get to the North Star. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Um, so Dennis, uh, you are one of the pioneers in location-based systems. Um, you actually hold several patents on the topic. How do you think we can bond the real world to um, the metaverses and add value actually to them? Uh, that's a that's a great question. That's probably like a whole forty minute talk right there. Um, 
you know, there's, um, you know, one of the things we used to say at Foursquare, like when we were building software is like, you know, the goal is not to get someone's attention in the phone and get them to be lost in the phone. Like I remember Facebook and Instagram and YouTube, they were measuring the number of minutes that you'd spend in a session. And it's like, the more minutes you get, the better. And we, I mean, this is back in like 2013, we were like, that's not a good metric. The metric is how quickly can you get in and get out, right? You're looking for something to do. Your friend's over here. Here's a place to go to. Go do that thing. Put the app away. Go, go spend time mm-hmm. with your friends. And, and that's, I mean, that's what we prioritize. And that's, that's what we were trying to build. And I, and I think the best software that enables people to enhance their experience of the real world, um, you know, respects that people are going to spend time not in front of a screen, right? Yeah. And, and I kind of feel like the, there's a little bit of like a fork in the road here. Like I have this romantic vision, which I still kind of hold on to from old school Foursquare of like, you know, software that changes the way you experience places, the software you want to use very quickly, um, you know, software that, do- that doesn't bug you. It only pops up a notification when something really interesting is around. And then there's this whole other world where it's like, no, 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 we're going to put a screen in front of your face and you're going to be online 24 seven. That's just how it's going to be. And th- those two things are, those are two totally different paths. And so, you know, I, I, I am very interested in what is being built with augmented reality, but I don't know if I want this. I don't know if I want that all the time. And I don't think I'm going to know if I want that all the time until I, I can, I can try it out. Right. Yeah. Um, maybe, you know, it, this, this is kind of like an old man's argument. I feel like an old, old man's argument. <laughs> no way. Like, my parents are like, I'll never get a cell phone. I don't want to be reached all the time. But then once you have a phone, you're like, yeah, of course I want to be reached all the time. Why would I not want that? And so maybe that's the same thing with AR. It's like, I don't want the internet in my eyes all the time. But maybe it's actually, you know, of course I want this. Yeah, why, why would yeah. I not want this, right? And, and so, you know, it depends on how it's going to be built. And it's going to depend mm-hmm. on on um, you know what, what what the initial use cases are. So I'm very like curious about how the whole space is going to evolve. Yeah, yeah, me too, me too. Um, so uh, Dennis Foursquare's early arrival, Guala, raised a round last year, and you are also one of the investors. And it seems uh, from the news, I think, that it is also going after the metaverse market. What's your opinion about that? Um, yeah, I mean, I, I know Josh, uh, the founder of Goala from, from way back in the day, because we used to compete with them. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, when I heard about that they were going to basically resurrect the, the product and the brand and try to take another swing at it in, you know, 10 years later, Web 2 to Web 3, like, it's just, that's super interesting. Like, mm-hmm. I, I, I love to be supportive of that stuff, which is why I wanted to invest in it. Also, I think Josh is a fantastic entrepreneur and um, you know, very, very talented product and, and design person. Um, you know, I, I, I've seen some, some of the work. It's all, it's all super interesting. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I don't want to disclose too much about the prototypes and things I've seen, yeah. but like, you know, that, that's like right in my wheelhouse, right? Mm-hmm. A game that's meant to, to make the real world more interesting. And I think Josh and I are cut from the same cloth or we share some similar nerd DNA in that sense. And so I'm, I'm really excited to see where that project goes because like, I think some of that DNA still lives in the, you know, in the existing Foursquare apps. But I mean, those, those apps aren't like, um, you know, they're just, they're just not the, a priority for the company today in the way mm-hmm. that they, they were you know, eight years ago. I mean, the company has just moved on to different things. It just kind of is what it is. Um, But yeah, I'm really interested to see where, where, where Josh and his team take that. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Um, uh, So Dennis, I think you are one of the entrepreneurs who was actually ahead of its time. Um, Do you have any advice for entrepreneurs who want to go after new and unestablished markets, like for example, Metaverse? Yeah. You know, I think, um, Foursquare has done some pretty awesome stuff, but like in a way it was, it was too early. And my, I think my last startup was too early and you get really, you get really burnt out from being too, <laughs> too early. It's a real, like you really want to time it just right. A buddy of mine, actually a guy that used to work at Foursquare, this guy named, named Jack, he, he was telling me, um, you know, we're trying to figure out how do you, how do you determine if, if something is too, you know, too early or not? And he's like, 
well, if it feels too late, maybe the timing is just right, you know? <laughs> and so You, you want to offset I, that. Yeah, 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 yeah. You don't want to be the first person at the party. You don't want to be the last person at the party. You want to be like the the 10th to last person that shows up. Um, and I, I think that's true of a lot of the AR and, and metaverse stuff, yeah. you know? But, but at the same time, like I, I made my career by being early to mobile like we built mm -hmm. stuff with mobile phones when no one was building stuff with phones because it was you really couldn't you had to you really had to be imaginative as to like what what phones were turned into and you know there's a ton of entrepreneurs these days that are you know as imaginative about what ar will become as we were about what mobile will become and so you know are they early they're only early if they don't survive long enough right but if you yeah. if you can build a company and last you you know the name of the game is be around long enough so it's like you get the timing right mm -hmm. you know it's so hard to get the timing right the only way to get the timing right is to is to be around forever exactly 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 um so dennis uh, do you have any book or movie recommendations and this topic for listening to the podcast oh um I'll tell you two things. Number one, I just got, uh, this is really nerdy, but I got really into this stuff called like solar punk, which is it's huh? kind of the opposite of cyberpunk. Right. And so I just, I literally just picked up this book of, of short stories. Huh. Of, uh, this, this is a book called sun vault and I've been going through it and I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm only whatever 40 pages into it, but I'm like, I'm really mm -hmm. into this. It's like um, cyberpunk, but, instead of being dystopia it's utopia because everyone uh, solved all the climate change problems it's really it's a really beautiful idea it's really blowing my mind um and i, I kind of got on this because i watched uh station 11 on hbo mm -hmm. um, i haven't seen that oh it's, it's fantastic it's like 10 episodes and it's kind of like a you know dystopian science fiction like 20 years after a pandemic and it's it has like strong crossover vibes with this stuff um and I, I really enjoyed that, but I would, I'd recommend both of those. Oh, great. Thanks very much. Um, so Dennis, as of our last question, what do you think uh, the future of AR and VR and the metaverse look like? Um, you know, the, I think the future, the future of that stuff looks exactly like the future of mobile phone stuff did, right? You know, there was a, it was a, a period of time where, only a handful of people had mobile phones and only a handful of people had smartphones. And then it was ubiquitous. Mm -hmm. And now there's a period of time where, you know, I, I tell people it's the same, the same flow as like video games. You tell people like, Oh, I play games. Like, well, games are for nerds. And it's like, actually they're not like games is a bigger business than movies. And then that, that process takes 20 years when I, you know, if I tell, um, you know, some of the, you know, if I'm talking to the parents from my kid's school and I say, hey, I have an Oculus and I spent an hour in Oculus last night. They're like, that's super nerdy. And it's like, <laughs> well, it is maybe, but like at some point it won't be, right? Yeah. So what does it look like? Like, it looks like, um, you know, what's the famous quote? The future's here. It's not, it's just not evenly distributed. Exactly. Exactly. There's a version of that that is less about being evenly distributed. It's more about like, you know, the stuff that people think is silly and the stuff that people think is nerdy is the stuff that becomes mainstream. And I think, you know, you're around long enough, you just see that over and over and over again. Mm -hmm. Great, great. Well, um, Dennis, it was an honor having you on the All Things XR podcast. Thank you very much. This is fun. Thanks for the conversation. And uh, yeah, look forward to chatting. Thanks very much.